All right, um, here's the agenda. Uh, Mr. Bova, I think we're ready for you to start. All right, can you hear me? Yes. 7.05, let's call the right. meeting to order and start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first we have approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, we have approval of the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, hey, should we state our name before we vote? I think we did last time. Good. I think that would be best. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay. okay. Oh my. That makes sense. I was kind of passing over that on these. Yeah. I, I just lost everybody. We can still see you. Really? Well, that's good. Yep. All right, so from here on, we'll state our name before we vote. Next, we have public participation. Board members and administrators will listen to concerns and respond when appropriate by mail or telephone at a later date. We will not be able to respond to your questions at this time. The purpose of this session is for us to listen to you and give you the opportunity to share with us. Per policy BDDH-1, public participation at board meetings, the following guideline procedures will be followed. In order to speak during public participation, a public comment form must be filled out and submitted to the board president prior to the beginning of the meeting. The public comment period will not exceed 15 minutes. No individual will be permitted to speak more than once, and each speaker will be allotted no more than five minutes. And I would add in instances of virtual meetings, you can contact me via email, and I do not have any emails. Next, we have report of the superintendent. Yes, well, good evening, evening everyone. Um, I'm gonna switch to this report. Um, I hope you're all staying warm and safe and uh, getting ready for some more snow. <laughs> um, tonight, we'll start my report with notes of appreciation. They are located in your board packet and I believe there are three notes in there this time. Um, the second item is to look at enrollment counts. We uh, just submitted the last Wednesday in January count to Jesse. And so I'll just do some quick comparisons. The first day of school this year, we had 1,779 students. When we did our September count, we were down three. And here at our January count, we had 1,753. So that means we're down um, about 23 students. Um, not too surprising. We've had quite a few this year. The parents have made the decision along the way to homeschool their child because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But when you compare 2019-20 to 2020-21, um, you see that we're down about 73 students. Again, a lot of parents chose to take their children to homeschool. We also had quite a few parents this year um, not a significant number, but quite a few parents who made the decision for their kindergarten child to go ahead and wait at least one more year before they sent them. Um, so we do expect our kindergarten numbers to go up this year. So I think we can definitely see from our January enrollment count in particular that the pandemic is having an effect on our enrollment. Um, then if we look, but if we look at our pre-K enrollment, the first day of school, we had 56 students. Um, we went up four in our September count. 
And then we went up 12 in our January count. And we're up one student this year as compared to last year. Um, but this is something when I showed you the September number, it continues to grow throughout the school year as we find more and more students who need services. So um, in our early childhood special education program. So, um, you know, we're re real excited and proud of those numbers are concerned about what we're seeing with the pandemic. Um, so that is the enrollment summary. Uh, does anyone have any questions before I move on? I'm seeing a bunch of head and no's. Okay. I think, I uh, think Mr. Go ahead. might need to be unmuted. Um, he sent me a, a note. Who? Sure he can find uh, Jim. Let me see where's. I've lost everything. I don't have an agenda or any anything anymore. I think the only thing I can do, Bailey, is to ask him to unmute. Okay, I will let him know and see if we can figure out if he can see that on his. Um, I guess if he has a question, can he put it in the chat? Yes, I will mention that to him too. Um, oh, and he's, uh, Jim, you're unmuted now. Yes, I saw that. And it okay. did a little box, so. Okay. Great. Did you have a question or were you just trying to unmute? Uh, trying to unmute. Okay. All right. Um, then I will go ahead and go on to kindergarten registration. Um, St. John Elementary has their kindergarten registration scheduled for Saturday, March 6th, starting at 8 a.m. and running until approximately noon. Bloomsdale Elementary's is Saturday, March 27th, again from 8 a.m. to until approximately noon. Um, if you need to schedule an appointment for your child, um, we started taking appointments on February 8th. Uh, so go ahead and just call the elementary office where your child would attend school. And um, they're answering phones right now because we are doing virtual instruction and um, they can set your child up with an appointment. Any questions on kindergarten registrations? Nope. All right. Um, I went ahead and canceled the principal's report for this month, or yes, for this month, because today the principals were pretty busy taking care of our virtual instruction day. Um, from everything I heard, uh, there were a few bumps, but overall uh, the teachers and the building principals were very happy and pleased at how everything went. Um, I will encourage any parent out there who experienced any problems or needs some assistance to call us. Um, talk, email your child's teacher, call your child's building. Um, our tech department is open and operating. Just call us and we will try to help you get the answers that you need to make sure your child can do his or her work. Um, and then safety reports, I do not believe there are any in your packet this month. Um, we've had to cancel and reschedule several because of the, the wonderful weather that we're experiencing. And before we move on, I want to remind everybody one more time that it is Missouri School Board Member Recognition Week. It's actually this week, February 14th through the 20th. Um, just want to thank the board members for everything they do. Uh, I'm very proud to work with all of you and appreciate all the hard work and everything that you do for our district and our kids. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Boba, that is the end of my report. Well, thank you too. And thanks to all the other board members. It's a tremendous board. So I appreciate it very much. Dr. Fleig, I didn't know if you had time to um, answer maybe one question. Um, we had talked about uh, this board possibly adopting a resolution uh, to send to the legislature about a certain uh, bill, but uh, we are not going to do that. I just wanted to bring it to the public's attention that there are several bills out there uh, to expand charter schools, uh, to expand uh, for-profit charter schools, uh, to establish uh, educational savings accounts, which are really just uh, using
public tax dollars to go to a private school. Um, and there's also some bills out there to change uh, uh, school board elections to the November election instead of the April election. And uh, anyone else, please feel free to speak up. But uh, uh, I think this board is fairly united against those bills. Um, those bills could hurt public schools. Uh, nothing against charter schools or private schools or parochial schools. Just would like to see public school dollars go to public schools. Well, and I will also add the one particular bill that we're talking about, it's Senate Bill 55. Um, it also has a provision in it uh, for basically homeschool children and children who attend public schools and participate in athletes to have different standards. Um, there would be no academic requirement or no attendance requirement on a homeschool child, whereas a, a child attending public school would be required to meet the academic requirement. Um, but it, it creates a double standard that just isn't fair to kids in general. So that is also part of the bill that we're talking about. Yeah, and for anyone who's watching who doesn't know, those some of those bills in different fashions would take uh, public tax dollars and uh, allow uh, that money to be spent, uh, like I said, at private or parochial schools and then some charters that are uh, for profit. So again, I don't think the board is against charter schools at all, as long as they're sponsored by local school boards. And uh, we obviously have no need for that here. Uh, but uh, if you want any other uh, information, please feel free to find one of us. Or if you uh, are in agreement, feel free to contact uh, uh, Senator Elaine Gannon or Representative Dale Wright and let them know that. Thank you. Yes, I was gonna say there are similar bills in the house too. So yes, contacting Representative Wright would be appropriate and necessary also. So thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Boba. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of your report. We're on to unfinished business school calendar for 2021-2022. Okay. Uh, I think I have these backwards, so I'm going to go here for a minute. Mm. Hang on just a second. Okay, 2021-22, uh, this is for our next school year. Um, as you will see, the first day of school in this calendar would be Monday, August 23rd. Um, we set the MISHA dead period for activities for the summer of 2021 back in August of 2020. And so that dead period will run July 31st through August 8th. Um, again, the first day of school here on August 23rd. Uh, no school on Friday, September 3rd. This will be a professional development day for all employees. And then Monday, September 6th would be the Labor Day holiday. Um, that would bring us here to October 28th where we would have a half day of school, do parent teacher conferences that evening. And then there would be no school on October 29th. Um, when we move to November, uh, November 11th is our Veterans Day holiday, so there would be no school. November 24th, we would have a half day of school and then be off November 25th and the 26th for Thanksgiving holiday. Um, then we move to December, Christmas break. We would have a half day on December 22nd and it would begin um, on, at, on that day, the 22nd and run through January 6th, and I'll come back to that in just a second. Ending um, on December 22nd here allows us to hold at the middle school, high school, three days of final exams on December 20th, 21st, and 22nd, which will allow us to end the semester here before we go on Christmas break. Um, we received several comments along that line that um, in particular middle school and high school teachers would prefer to do that if we could. It does create somewhat of a slight imbalance um, with 82 days in first semester and 90 days in second semester. But um, 
we don't think it's significant enough to really cause an issue. So we, we would recommend that we end uh, first semester before we leave for Christmas break. So then we would come back from Christmas break on Thursday, January 6th. Um, we would start second semester here. We would then have Monday, January 17th off for Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. We would go through February 18th and this will be a professional development day. This is what we call our river professional development event. Um, and it is a professional development day with Jefferson R7, uh, Windsor and Herculaneum. So our teachers will be able to get together to collaborate, to talk about lesson plannings and, and curriculum and just create a time for them to network. Um, so then we would be off on Monday, February 21st for President's Day. We would have a full professional development day on March 11th with no school. Um, if we look here in April, April 13th would be a half day of school and we would start Easter break and be off the 14th, 15th, 18th and come back on the 19th. Then we would look at May 20th as our last day of school with graduation on the 21st. We have built the uh, following week, the five days, Monday through Friday in as makeup days for students if we get inclement weather like we are this year. And then for this calendar, we did add these days onto the calendar for our employees to know that they are potential makeup contracted days for them um, so that they have it on their calendars. And uh, if we get into a situation where we have a lot of snow days, they know that they're going to have to work and make those days up. Um, this calendar provides us with 1,108 hours, total hours of attendance. The state law requirement, the minimum attendance hours is 1,044. So going those extra hours and having that extra time allows us to make up these five days. And then if we need to absorb some of the required 60 total hours that we make up and take them out of our total hours of attendance, we can do that without uh, getting in trouble for not attending as many hours as we're supposed to. That 1044 is an important number. And so that's what we're trying to stay above. But we can do that in this calendar. Um, we uh, put it out on a survey for all of our employees. And uh, I think there were 58 comments. And of those 58 comments, there was like 40 or 41 that basically said to the calendar committee that they did a great job, the calendar looked good and uh, people really seem to be happy with it. So this is the calendar that I am presenting tonight for all of you to review. And uh, well, you've had it for a while to, to take action and approve. Does anyone have any questions? No, no. I think it looks good. I am, um, you know, we have a great calendar committee. They work hard, they collaborate. They really get out there and um, do a really good job of trying to think through all the different scenarios for the different groups of employees that we have. So I'm really proud of the work that they do. I got a question. Yes. So with this, it kind of even for this year with the snow days with them going to the, the AMI mm -hmm. so are we do we have to go and make up the days physically or are we covering our tracks how, how does all this work well our first five days we promised our parents our students our employees they were truly snow days so we had five days I think our, our fifth day was last Thursday. So Tuesday, today was day, snow day number six. So today was our first day of AMI or virtual instruction. So we can count the attendance from the activities and the students participation today. We can count up to a maximum of 36 hours in this method. Okay. So Will this we do is, that next year too? Yes, this is new this school year, DESE or the state, I don't remember who approved it. And we're actually, this is, today was our first day ever trying to use it. So the feedback that we got 
is it went very well. Like I said, there were a few glitches here or there, but for the majority, the majority of our students were on and participating in the various activities. Okay. Dr. Fleegan, am I wrong in that the first five days, which we agreed to keep as traditional snow days, were also built into the year? So we do not make those up? No, actually the, the five snow days, and I'll, we'll see the current calendar in just a minute, but the first five snow days we make up in this week on that calendar. So I'll talk about our last day of school when we go over that calendar in a little bit. And we'll actually put an announcement out to our families um, after this calendar is approved, if I'm, I'm if I remember right, is that correct, Bailey? I don't know where you went. Is yes. that correct? Okay, <laughs> I was looking for. Her. She's shaking her head. Yes. So <clears throat> I think we plan to do that tomorrow. And this count. Yes. Yes, I had it on our to do list to do that tomorrow. Okay. So this calendar for next year is the same way with the snow days, basically. Yes. We would, gotcha. we would guarantee five, you know, kids need snow days. It's important, especially when, you know, we actually get snow, um, but it's important for everyone to have a break and just to take a breather and truly enjoy a snow day and get to go outside and play if you can, or just relax. Um, so we think it's important and snow days have great value, but we also know we need to, to continue learning. And um, so, that's how we kind of structured it, and it seemed to work this school year. Any other questions? No. I would entertain a motion. This is Joan Hook. I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 calendar as presented. This is Martha Riesinger, I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. I'm gonna to try to go through everybody without a list in front of me. Uh, Eric Bosler. Yes. David Bova, yes. Terry McDaniel. Yes. Joan Hook. Yes. Martha Riesinger. Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Richard Rudloff? I see a thumbs up for Mr. Rudloff, so I think we're good. Very well. Motion carries. All right. I All believe right. next on the agenda is a min. Nope. It's going to be the revision to 2020 2021 school calendar <laughs> under new business. All right, um, this recommendation is coming to you again from the calendar committee. They um, are unanimously proposing that we, we currently have March 12th here on the calendar as a half day of school uh, with students for four and a half hours and then staff members would have from one to three for professional development. Um, our employees in the committee are asking for this entire day to work on professional development, um, curriculum, instruction, assessments, virtual instruction. Um, I think at some point, and Dr. Taylor can correct me if I'm wrong, at some point after the 12th year, we will administer our spring in WEA uh, to students in kindergarten through eighth grade. So that takes a little planning and a little time. And then here in April and May, we will also be administering um, grade level assessments and end of course exams um, to our students. So we're asking for that day to work on instruction and to also talk about next year. Um, next year may look a little bit different uh, the way we have to structure some of our elementary classes in our buildings. So we just need a little bit of time. Um, and so what that does is that reduces our total hour of attendance from 1,108 to 1,103.5. So we're still well above the 1044. 
Um, and then I will also, because it came up here, on this calendar, the last day of school was supposed to be here on May 21st. But since we've had the five snow days already, um, our last day of school will shift to May 28th. It is the Friday before Memorial Day. Memorial Day. We're very happy about that. Uh, so that is going to happen. And like I said, Bailey and I will work on that communication um, and share that change out with parents and, and patrons and uh, our employees tomorrow. But this recommendation is just to change this March 12th half day into a full day of, of professional development for our staff. Does anyone have any questions? I'll move to approve the revision to, this is Eric Bosler, move to approve the revision to the 2021 school calendar as presented. Terry McDaniel, second. I have a motion and a second to approve the revision to the 2020-2021 school calendar. David Bova, yes. Eric Bosler? Yes. Terry McDaniel? Yes. Joan Hook? Yes. Martha Reesinger? Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Richard Rudolph? And I see an a okay. okay, he says. Yes. There you go. All right, motion, motion carries. Um, next, we have the amended budget. All right, I'm gonna try something a little bit different, so bear with me. All right, so you all can see my screen, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. Okay. Um, so we, uh, I'm going to present this in a little bit different manner to actually show you some graphs and, and some things for the amended budget. Um, this graph is basically all funds and a summary of the entire budget. So we have five years of data. So 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So if we look here, at the 2021 budget, we see that our revenues were supposed to receive $34.3 million. And those number, that number does include the $5.38 million that you all, uh, when you did the bond refunding earlier this year, and we saved the, all that money, that this is part of the revenue that you're seeing here, this 5.3 is from that bond refunding but it gets paid right back out in our debt down here. So our expenses for this year are projected to be 34.7 million. So that is going to leave us a deficit of about $388,000. Um, that is much better than what we originally started the year off looking at. Um, and I'm still very hopeful that we can balance it out and really come in at closer to a more balanced budget. Um, so we're still looking at sources um, to help fund the things that we've had to buy, buy due to the pandemic. Um, we're still looking at all of those revenue streams too. Um, what this graph also does is it provides you a summary of historically where our revenues come from. Um, the majority of the revenues that St. John R2 receives comes from local sources. So from our community, our, our taxes. Um, our second source of income is traditionally state sources, meaning um, the state formula and transportation. Um, but you see here in 2018, this green line, this, it's called non-current revenue. And then you see it here again this year. These were the two bond refundings. This was the 6.8 million and this is the 5.3 that we just did. So these are atypical and not really a source of funding. I mean, they're a source of savings in the end but that's what that green line represents. Then if you look over here at our expenditures, um, all school districts in Missouri spend the largest amount of their money, their expenses in salaries and benefits for employees. Um, so you see that here, the majority of our revenue goes to expenses for salaries for all of our employees. 
um, and then benefits follow and purchase services, you just kind of see how it compares out. And it's pretty typical from year to year, but every once in a while you get this long and short-term debt like we've seen the past two years with those bond, bond refundings. If you break it down even further and you just want to look at this year's revenues, 60.6% um, of our, our money comes from local. I mean, if you want to get very specific, I mean, here it is. Um, with 15.7 from the non-current. Again, that's the bond refunding. This yellow is federal sources, so about 8.4% federal. The gray is 11.4, that's state. And this orange is 3.7, and we get a little bit of county money, not a lot. But again, you look over here at the expenses, 44% uh, this blue is salaries, 12% is benefits, Again, this is long and short-term debt. This is a big payment for us, one of the largest we've had. Um, the gray is purchase services, yellow supplies and materials. So that's just a quick look at the overall budget. Um, I'm also going to break it down by fund for you and try to keep it pretty simple and kind of high level. Um, so we'll just stick here with 2021. If you look at 2021, you see our total revenue is supposed to be about 13.8 13 13 .8 million and our total expenses are supposed to be about 10 point, we'll round up 10.5 million. So in theory, that should leave us a surplus of 3.3 million. But what we're gonna do with that 3.3 million is we're going to transfer about 3.2 out to two other funds to cover those deficits. So the first one that we're gonna make the largest transfer to is fund two, this is our teacher's fund. This fund is used to pay anyone who has a teaching certificate or a substitute certificate. So any of our aides who, have, who hold a current and active sub certificate, they get paid out of this fund also. So if you look at the total revenue, it's about 12.6 million. We're supposed to expend 15.6, 15.7. So that's gonna leave a deficit of $3,007,880. So fund two always has to end in a zero balance. So we're going to transfer this $3,780 or $3,007,880 we're going to transfer that out of fund one, put it in fund two and make sure we end in a zero balance here. Um, this is just a quick summary of our debt service. Again, you see the $5.3 million coming in here as revenue, and then we're gonna pay it out in this huge payment. And it's gonna create a small deficit in this account, which we prepare, prepared for and we can handle. Um, and then we look at our fund for our last fund, our capital projects. Um, our revenue is about 92,663. Total expenditures right now is projected to be 288,000. And that'll create a deficit, not quite at 200,000, but again, we'll transfer those funds from fund one into fund four. We try to always have an ending balance in our capital projects fund at about $500,000. So I know that's a lot of information, but I'm gonna go back to the start because this is the important information. Um, and that is that right now we're uh, projecting that we're gonna deficit spend about $388,000 in this year's budget. A lot of information. <laughs> It was good though. You had pointed out in the beginning, it was much better than the uh, budget we yes. adopted in uh, July, which I believe was a $919,000 deficit. So that's a very good improvement. That sounds correct. Um, you know, when you work on budget, it's your best guess at that time. And as the school year goes along, we get more and more information and we know, okay, like for this year, we know, um, Right now there are withholds in our state payment. We know how much is being withheld. We know that our state revenue is lower than it's traditionally been because we're also receiving less of a transportation payment because there were cuts there too. Um, so, you know, we're, it's just trying to, to make sure we come out in a good place. And uh, Chris Ritter does an amazing job 
keeping an eye on all of this and uh, alerting me when there's issues or there's things that we can do to offset, you know, an expense that we have to make with some revenue that may come in. So, and I also want to thank Bailey and Nancy. Um, they spend a lot of time looking at grants and trying to find ways to also bring in some extra revenue for us. And of course, our career technical education teachers every year they're applying for 50 50 grants or 75 25 grants where we only pay 50 percent or 25 percent of those purchases for like new apple computers or equipment in our automotive program um, that's a huge saving and a huge help and it gives our kids an advantage as they learn those career and technical education skill sets so that is my presentation on the budget. Does anyone have any questions? No, it was a good presentation. Thank you. I'm, this is a new program and Chris and I are trying to learn it. And uh, when we put the amended budget in and I, we got this back, we were like, oh, these are pretty cool. This makes it a lot easier to present, number one, and I think a lot easier for you to understand and for our patrons to see the big picture. I was just going to say it makes it easier for us to understand. It really you did a good you did a great job, you guys. Thanks. Well, Chris deserves most of the credit, so make sure you thank her when you see her. I will. <clears throat> this is Jim Kirshner. I move to approve the amended budget for the 2020-2021 school year as presented. This is Martha Reesinger. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the amended budget. David Bowley, yes. Eric Bosler? Yes. Terry McDaniel? Yes. Joan Hook? Yes. Martha Reesinger? Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Richard Rudloff? Thumbs up. Got it. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda, we have CSIP. Yes, I will actually turn it over to Dr. Taylor. He's here. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Um, this is our annual review of our comprehensive school improvement plan. Um, we met on February 4th. Um, and just to review a couple items, uh, we remove any antiquated data uh, that's no longer applicable. We try to keep about 10 years of data uh, just for reference so we can see where we've been um, and develop a plan for where we want to go. Um, we look at updating the targets um, when it's applicable. And this year we added um, two major items to a variety of um, of areas. Uh, one was the NWEA data uh, analysis. Uh, since we've partnered with NWEA and began giving that test, um, we, we were originally, I believe, grades three through eight, and now we've expanded and we're K through eight. So we get quite a bit of data back. They're really good um, at analyzing that data and putting it together in reports. Um, so there were several places that we added that. Um, we also added uh, phonics instructions where applicable in grades K through two. We were lucky enough um, to get some phonics program. I believe it's called really great reading. Um, our teachers are really happy with it and it addresses an area uh, I believe that was challenging us a little bit. So just to go over a general overview, uh, goal one, we did add an action step to strategy four. We added action step five. That's on page 16 if you're following along. I know it's a little difficult since we're all on computers and we don't have paper copies. Um, so I'll just go ahead uh, and talk about it. This is um, where we added for ELA professional development, um, analyzing NWEA and phonics program data and using this information to seek professional development opportunities that will enhance ELA instruction. Then in math professional development in strategy five, we added action step four, which is basically the same action step uh, that we added for ELA and analyzing that NWEA data uh, in order to seek professional development um, 
that will enhance mathematics instruction. Um, goal two, we had no major updates. Um, goal three. Strategy 11, action step 11, we added. That's on page 26. I'll wait till Dr. Cleary catches up here. Yep, right there. Action step 11, continue to partner with community counseling to provide on-site school-based counseling for identified students. Um, community counseling sends counselors to our campus to meet with students um, for a variety of reasons and is a, really a big benefit um, in allowing students to meet with them here. Parents don't have to come pick them up and take them to community counseling to meet. Um, they miss uh, less class. They're back in class uh, much sooner than if they had to check out of school altogether. So they felt like, uh, the committee felt like it was important to partner um, to, to put that in as an action step in this area as well. Um, and then we didn't have any major um, updates in goal four or goal five. Um, now, when I say there's no major updates, the committee always does a great job in uh, rewording things, um, finding things that need to be updated. Um, so I guess to end, I wanna really thank our committee members. Um, you know, we meet at six o'clock in the evening. Uh, we invite parents, uh, business owners, uh, people in the community um, who are interested, really anybody can come and uh, give input. We always have great input from anybody who attends. Um, you know, our administrators come, our teachers come, but we really appreciate the time that parents take out of their day to come in. And you know, at, at the middle school and high school level, students even attend um, and we always get great insight because we're in it every day. And, and I kind of give this spiel um, at the, the CSIP meeting. As educators, we're in it every day, and sometimes being in it every day, we get blinders on. And parents bringing an outside perspective in really allows us to open up our thinking and maybe think outside the box a little bit. They bring to the table things that we don't always see that make complete sense. So I wanna thank all the committee members um, for all their input. Uh, we, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we separate into groups and kind of jigsaw this out. Uh, they get to pick where they wanna go. Um, and then I get a master copy back of all their suggestions. I take the master copy and then update the CSIP on my end. And that's what I'm presenting to you all this evening uh, for your approval. Are there any questions? No, just thank you for all your hard work. There's not any other questions. Would someone like to make a motion? This is Eric Bosler. I will move to approve the revisions to the CSEP plan as presented. Harry McDaniel says yes. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to approve the CSEP plan as presented. David Bova, yes. Eric Bosler? Yes. Terry McDaniel? Yes, again. Joan Hook? Yes. Martha Riesinger? Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Richard Rudloff? A-OK. -okay. All right. I believe motion carries that uh, we now go to action for a closed meeting. Terry McDaniel, I move that the Board of Education hold a closed meeting with a closed record and a closed vote following the regular open meeting on February 16, 2021 to be held in the R.W. Thomas Library, 715 Washington Street, St. Jerry, Missouri, for the purpose of discussing and voting upon the following items of business. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting particular employees, scholastic probation, expulsion, or graduation of identifiable individuals, individually identifiable personnel records, performance rating, a record pertaining to employees or applicants for employment. I further move that notice of this meeting and its tentative agenda be posted as required below. Eric Bosler, second. Eric, roll call. Eric Bosler? Yes. Uh, Dave Bova? Yes. Oops. Yes. Gotcha. Don't hook? 
Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Karen McDaniel? Yes. Martha Riesinger? Yes. Richard Ruloff? Did you give a thumbs up? Thumbs up. I don't have, a, I don't have the video. Okay. Yes. Motion carried 7 0. Next, we have motion to go to a closed session. So moved. Uh, Martha Riesinger. Closed session with a closed record and a closed vote after a short break. Who did that? That was Eric, and I think Martha was going to grab the second. It wasn't me, but that's okay. No, I think it was. I'll second it. I think it was Mr. Kirshner. Yeah. Oh, correct? it was Jim. Jim. Uh, Eric, Eric Bosner will second it, though. Jim made the motion. Oh, Jerry, I messed that up. Jim and Eric. Here we go. Got it? Got it. JK and EB. All right. Uh, do I need to go through that individually, I guess? Dave Bovey, yes. Eric Fosler? Yes. Jim Kirshner? Yes. Martha Riesinger? Yes. Terry McDaniel? Yes. Joan Hook? Yes. 